Hello and welcome back to the third match of the top eight of the Victory Road Circuit Grand Finale. I'm Jamie Boyd. I'm going to be joined by Ben Kiriaku and what a game we just had. Uh, the Kieran White, a Pokemon we don't very often see, uh, did unfortunately fall to that Zashin, but it was a fantastic game. What were your thoughts on that last game, Ben? Uh, well, other than being distracted by the fact that there was a Kieran White in front of me, and it's the first time I've really seen that, certainly at the top level of a tournament before. Um, so first off, props to, to Matteo for uh, getting that to this stage of the event. Um, it was just that interaction between the Zashian on uh, Kevin's side of the field and the Kieran White on the on Mateo's side of the field and how those two interacted with the other three Pokemon that were brought to the game. You had that Charizard with the Wakanberry uh, doing so much work in the end of game three and sealing it for uh, Kevin. But of course, it was that battle backwards and forwards between uh, everything that wasn't Zashian and everything that wasn't Kieran White. Uh, and really, both players having such a command of how their team operated in order to just make sure that they had the right resources left at the end of the game. So we did see that Zashian advance into the top four, and we're going to get at least another Zashian going forward. <laughs> we do have two more Zashians to, to showcase with Guillermo Castilla versus Taron Birdie. So we're going to be having a look at these two players' teams. Uh, two two Zashians, but two very different approaches here. Uh, as we see Guillermo's team there, uh, rocking that Zashian, Grimmsnarl, Rotom Heat, Gastron, Rillaboom, and Dragapult. Uh, very different to Taron's team. I think Zashian is the only Pokemon that they have between them. So uh, very interesting team compositions going into this. Yeah, certainly, and uh, Guillermo, uh, very well established, and we know him well. He's he's someone that I really like watching uh, play as well, uh, both a command of Pokemon, uh, that pedigree of experience coming from many, many years of playing. Um, and, of course, he's quite animated. A uh, little message on the screen, let me sleep. Uh, it's the middle of the day, but maybe we'll get some yawns uh, on Guillermo to, to let him uh, sleep at the end of the event uh, if he makes it a little bit further. Uh, but to do that, he's going to have to get through uh, Taron Birdie, who is the only representative from the UK here, uh, and certainly a brilliant player. You can see his achievements there. Uh, top 32 of and top 16 in regionals, and of course top 8 and top 4 in two Victory Road online events. So uh, no stranger to being at the top level of competition. And uh, something that we know, uh, Jamie and I, being playing in the UK circuit for a long time, uh, Taran is always at that lo those local level events and always doing very well there as well. So a very, very consistent player. Yeah, very consistent indeed. Um, bringing that sun, a very tried and true team as well, uh, showing some good consistency there. But that Gothitelle uh, seems to be the star of Taran's team. A very <laughs> unconventional pick, uh, but really, really showcased itself in the top 16 match with all those hypnosises. Uh, being very accurate, so we'll have to see how accurate that Gothitelle is going to be going into this match. So yeah, we're going to be getting the two Zashians facing off against each other. And it's going to be interesting to see how the two teams fare up against each other. It certainly is, and these players are nearly ready to get started, so uh, they have found each other. We're going to be going into team preview very quickly, uh, but before we get there, ah, looks like we're going there right now, uh, slightly ahead of myself there, so just a quick rundown of the teams. We have Gastrodon, Rillaboom, Dragapult, Zashian, a Rotom Heat form, and Grimmsnarl for Guillermo, and of course that Zashian, Torkoal, uh, Incarnate Thunderous, uh, Venusaur, Gothitelle, and Landorus for Taran. How do you think this is going to go down, Jamie? It's very, very hard to predict with it, with this one. Uh, you've got the, the Rotom Heat against that, that Sun Core uh, of Taran as well as being very good against Zashian. So Rotom Heat could be playing a very key part for Guillermo in this match. But at the same time, we do have that Gothitelle as well. Uh, being able to, to spam those Hypnosis, maybe set up a Trick Room as well, uh, get that Torco into position so it can just start spamming those Eruptions as well. It's definitely going to be quite an interesting matchup here. Uh, you've got the Dragapult as well, which we did see is carrying will o -Wisp, so uh, that definitely could, new to the damage output of Taran Zashian as well. So uh, also a Pokemon that is quite good against the, the Sun Core as well, against the Venusaur and the Torkoal, if it does mm. not be the Dynamax candidate for Guillermo. So I would expect to see at least one of the Dragapult or the Rotom Heat coming to this match, but the Landorus as well on Terran's side is going to be threatening probably the most amount of damage into that Rotom if it's carrying those rock moves that it so often carries, and also is able to intimidate down the Zashian and threaten it with the super effective ground moves. And not so much the Dragapult, uh, the Dragapult could be a good pick into the Landorus uh, because it can't be intimidated, of course, with that clear body. And we've also got the, the Gastrodon on Guillermo's side uh, that could be could be going for those yawns. Uh, we'll see if it's going to going to get some sleep 
uh, here and there. Yeah, Guillermo did say that he wants to sleep. Maybe facing down that Gothitelle is the, <laughs> is the way to do it with all those hypnosis. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. Uh, certainly wanting to get hit by those hypnosis and uh, Taron, uh, certainly one of those players. Uh, we have a little bit of a running joke in the UK community that uh, Taron always hits his hypnosis, uh, blind or otherwise. So uh, we'll see if that holds true for this game. But we're going to turn one. Uh, we'll have to see what these players have opted to do going into turn one of game one. Uh, these players have got open team sheets they'll know who they're playing uh, and will have done a lot of preparation as taron launches out straight away with that sun mode gonna be the torkoal and the venusaur and guillermo going for dragapult and heat form rotom so saying that the dragapult and rotom are very good against the sun core and they are led immediately into that sun core so quite a good lead for for guillermo here uh, going to be going to be threatening a lot of damage with that dragapult and the rotom getting some sun boosted overheats or even max flares if the rotom wants to go for it uh, with the safety goggles as well it's going to be avoiding any of the sleep powders so it doesn't have to care about that and the venusaur can't really be do too much damage to it uh, so Rotom is in a really, really nice position here. If it mm. wants to just go for a nasty plot, it uh, really does have the opportunity to do that. Or if it just wants to go on the offensive, try and take out either the Venusaur or the Torkoal very quickly. But we're going to start off with a Dynamax here. They certainly uh, looked like that was on Taran's side of the field, if uh, if I remember their outfits correctly. And it is that Venusaur uh, going out into uh, onto uh, Taran's side of the field, uh, going to be wanting to launch out those GMAX Vine Lashes, most likely uh, get some residual damage, even if it does get knocked out by a sun-boosted overheat from the uh, Rotom. But we are going to see a Dynamax as well come out for Guillermo. So uh, could be either or on this side of the field, both of them are viable candidates but it is going to be that rotom heat with the safety goggles a very very safe option for guillermo uh, to go down we'll have to see what it targets down because that venusaur is not looking like it wants to take a big attack but instead uh, going to be just a g max fine lash uh, going into the rotom not going to be doing too much damage but most importantly going to get that g max fine lash uh, effect onto the field and a dragon dance coming out from the uh, Dragapult doing a little bit of shift damage and Max Flare launching out into the Venusaur is going to be enough to pick up the KO. Wow, that is a lot of damage. Uh, the bulk on that Venusaur that it gets from Dynamax, not enough to make sure that it survives that attack with the Sun Boost from the uh, Torko coming out onto the field. It uh, looked like something like a uh, Eruption or Burning Jealousy maybe uh, coming out from the Torko. Uh, they're doing a little bit of damage, but it's Definitely Guillermo on the front foot. Yeah, you can see exactly why Rotom is such a good sun counter. Uh, taking almost no damage from that Vine Lash. Uh, getting that residual chip going is going to be good for Taran, but then just losing his Gigantamax immediately, uh, thanks to that Rotom, having that sun-boosted Max Flare available to it. And it's going to be resisting that Behemoth Blade from the Zashian as well, so even though it is in its Dynamax form, really not going to be threatened too much by that Zashian, and is threatening back with a sun-boosted Max Flare uh, that would easily be able to pick up the KO on the Zashian. So Guillermo is definitely in the driving seat here and we'll have to see how fast the dragapult and the zashian are compared to each other uh, whether the dragapult wants to be going for a willow into that zashian if the rotom decides to target the torkoal instead or if it's um if it's a little bit slower so the zashian uh, would be able to take out the dragapult before it gets off any of the attacks but that rotom heat is really really in a strong position uh, very much so, but Zashian is going for that substitute, wanting to maybe uh, take a few turns away from that Rotom's Dynamax form, uh, get it back into its normal form, and we see a Phantom Force coming from the Dragapult, so going to be disappearing this turn as a Max Lightning coming out from that Rotom, going to be landing into the Torkoal, and not enough to pick up the KO. Uh, that's going to be setting electric terrain, but Taran's not going to have to lose his Torkoal this turn for his troubles and uh, munching on what looks like a citrus berry there uh, for the Torkoal. Going to be giving it, bringing itself back up uh, definitely to a point where it can survive a hit from uh, the Dragapult and uh, replying back with a little bit of damage onto that Rotom. Yeah, so uh, clutch survival for that Torkoal there, uh, being able to survive and get off a little bit more damage, but also not giving the switch in into the final Pokemon that could be taking the final max move of the Rotom. The Phantom Force, if it is targeting down that Zashian, could break the substitute of the Zashian, and then the follow-up Max Flare could hit into the Zashian, uh, but we'll have to see here. Uh, it looks like Taran's going to be preserving that Torkoal. 
He certainly is, and uh, bringing Landorus instead to get some Intimidate off onto uh, Guillermo's side of the field, but not going to affect that Rotom and clear body on the Dragapult stops that effect in its tracks. So we're just going to see this Zacian go for a Protect here. Uh, looks like it he's thinking that maybe the landerus is going to be taking that phantom force uh, but phantom force is coming into that substitute phantom force importantly goes through protect so uh, is going to be able to break that substitute break through that protect and allow rotom heat to follow up with a big max flare into that zashian a huge turn there for guillermo getting the clean one hit knockout uh, and taran Definitely on the back foot here. Guillermo playing this absolutely flawlessly. Yeah, the, the interaction of the Phantom Force breaking that protect so that the Max Flare can KO the Zashin. Very interesting interaction you don't see too often, but it's really coming into play here uh, for Guillermo and really in the driving seat. The Landorus doesn't have access to its Dynamax anymore. It would have to just go for some Rock Slides to try and KO the, the Rotom at this point, which has put in so much work. Being able to take out the Venusaur straight away, almost KO that Torkoal and take out the Zashin as well. And really just a, a really good demonstration of how strong Rotom Heat is against the the very common Suncor, especially paired with Zashin as well. Uh, the Landorus is the only real thing that can that can do damage to it. It's only been really the the Vinelash chip into that into that Rotom that was that was chipping it away. But yeah, yeah, it's going to be quite a quick game for Guillermo here. Yeah, certainly. I, and as you said right at the start of the game, it really did come down to the leads of that match that made it so quick for Guillermo to take the win here. Of course. The sun coming out against something that's really good against sun. Uh, and there's nothing really on Taran's team that likes taking a Max Flare in the sun. So there wasn't that opportunity for Taran to reposition very easily. Uh, maybe could have done so with his Torkoal. Uh, but ultimately, it was that Venusaur that went down very quickly. Uh, the Zashian in the back as well that was weak to it too. Um, and it just ended up that... Uh, that Rotom could really run away very quickly with the game. So going into game two, we're back in team preview. Uh, Casty having a bit of a stand up. He's calming his nerves uh, in true fashion. Um, but what is uh, Taran going to need to do this game, Jamie, in order to stop that Rotom from just absolutely running away? Yeah, there's, it doesn't seem like there's too many Pokemon on Terran's side of the field that can threaten that Rotom too much. It looks like it's really just the Landorus with its rock move. Uh, the Sun Corps, as we've seen, just it don't, really struggles with the Rotom heat. Uh, there was the Thunderous and the Gothitelle that was left in the back. Uh, the Gothitelle doesn't have any attacking moves. It would just have to go for those, those Hypnosis, which would be a way to stop the Rotom heat. Uh, and the Thunderous <laughs> is just resisted uh, as well. So uh, Taran really needs to rely on the Landorus. It was quite surprising that he decided to go for the Gigantamax with the Venusaur instead of saving the Dynamax option for the Landorus so that he could threaten down uh, that, that Rotom with the, with the Max Rockfall, uh, maybe valuing the Vinash chip a little bit too much there. Mm, certainly, but uh, we'll probably see a switch up here from Taran. Here we go. We have the Gothitelle and the Landorus. Uh, definitely a way to change up the game and uh, trap that Rotom in so it can get knocked out. Uh, the Dragapult and Rotom coming out from Guillermo, and that Dragapult is the only Pokemon in the field that's not going to be trapped for Guillermo. Yeah, quite a nice interaction with the with the Ghost typing there, being able to switch out. Uh, but does have access to the Willowisp, but we've also got the Lumberry on this Landorus, so not really threatened too much by this Dragapult at all. So definitely it ha has the option to go on the offensive here with the Landorus. Uh, you can't fake out the Dragapult, and you can't fake out a Dynamax Rotom if it did opt to go for that Dynamax as well. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised here if we just see the Gothitelle maybe helping out the, the Landorus with that helping hand, or going for one of those Hypnosis to just try and stop either of the Pokemon from moving. But this is a de definitely a much, much stronger lead coming out from Taran here into this Dragapult and the Rotom. The Lumberry really helping up the Landorus here uh, from that Dragapult, and you can really go on the offensive. Uh, certainly, and we see a Dynamax straight away coming from Guillermo, uh, going first as well, which indicates it could be that Dragapult uh, that's going for the Dynamax, and there it is. Uh, could be going for something like a Max Airstream, been quite common on Dragapult for a long, long time now, uh, and that would allow the Rotom to make sure it's outspeeding that Gothitelle, make sure it can get an attack off before uh, that uh, Gothitelle goes for something like a Hypnosis, but... Rotom not going to be taking any damage this turn. Uh, going to be just content to go for a Protect as Max Airstream does go into the Gothitelle, uh, takes some damage, and I believe that Gothitelle's holding a Focus Sash, so that's going to be broken this turn. Uh, both Dragapult 
and the Rotom are going to be raising their speed. So Rotolite coming out from the Landorus going to be doing a little bit of damage to the Dragapult and a Hypnosis coming out in true form. But no, Taran misses it. Uh, the, the curse of Taran. Uh, he, he hits all of his Hypnosises until he really, really needs to. Yeah, that would have been a very strong Hypnosis hit if that Gothitelle was able to connect. But that is one of the downsides of Hypnosis. It does have very shaky accuracy, uh, so definitely not always going to be connecting. And unfortunately, not connecting with the Dragapult this time. Correctly targeting down that Dragapult as well, since mm. the Rotom did go for the Protect and wouldn't have been affected by the Hypnosis. But now the Dragapult can just take the KO on this Gothitelle. Maybe not with an airstream, it's going to be very close uh, if that airstream would be enough, but it does have ac the access to its Phantasm that would easily be able to take the knockout on this Gothitelle. I certainly would be, and uh, Landorus is going to be going for the Dynamax there and going for uh, probably those Max Rockfall that you were talking about, Jamie, uh, trying to target down that Rotom. Of course, once that Rotom is taken care of, it does pave the way uh, quite a lot for the Sun Mode uh, probably in the back for Taran. A helping hand coming out from the Gothitel is going to be boosting the power of that Landorus uh, and going to be mitigating the attack drop coming out from this uh, Max Wormwind from the uh, Dragapult, which is going to be lowering the attack of uh, the Landorus here. Rotom just happy to go for an overheat here onto that Gothitel, pick up the knockout, so removing that trapping effect from the field. If Guillermo wants to now uh, switch out any of his Pokemon, uh, he is more than capable of doing so. Uh, we see a Max Airstream coming out from the Drag uh, sorry, from the Landorus, in fact, uh, into the Dragapult, so uh, just wanting to raise his speed and maybe not going for the KO this turn. Yeah, not going for the KO on the Rotom, and it's, that is the best way through that Rotom with the Landorus, and it's used one of its max moves already. You're not really going to be able to match the Dragapult with the speeds with the Airstream, because it's already gone for one of its own, so the Dragapult will definitely be moving first. Uh, could we mm. go for another Airstream to try and get that Rotom faster? But the Zashin coming in, at least when the Rotom has gone for an overheat, so it is at minus two special attack, and won't be able to threaten the Zashin too much. But the Dragapult did get that Airstream first, so it will outspeed the Zashin uh, on Taran's side of the field this turn. Could go for another Wormwind into the Landorus to try and reduce the attack of both the Landorus and the Zashin, uh, or go for the Max Phantasm to try and reduce the defenses, uh, maybe setting up for later if it can go for more of those Phantom forces. But getting that Airstream off with the Dragapult into the Gothitelle on the first turn, rather than just going for any of the super effective hits like the Max Phantasm uh, really really helps the Dragapult here because it can now outspeed the Zashian. Indeed it can and uh, Max Phantasm going into the Zashian we see a Max Guard coming out from the Landorus. Uh, it looked like Guillermo was quite happy to see that uh, as the Max Phantasm does indeed do more than 50% to that Zashian uh, bringing it down quite low. Uh, Behemoth Blade coming out from the Zashian likely going to be into that Dragapult uh, going to be taking it down this turn for sure. Uh, Zashian definitely not putting any punches there. Uh, so Dragapult going back to its trainer, but it's definitely done the work it needs to with all of those max air streams. And it'll be now down to the Rotom, uh, whether it's not got enough gas in the tank, so to speak, uh, to be able to knock out that Zashian. And it does, it gets the KO. So that Zashian is gonna be going down in Taran. Uh, may have been able to knock out one of Guillermo's Pokemon, but Guillermo arguably has ha knocked out the more important Pokemon here in that Zashian. Yeah, you've taken out the Zashian and you most likely have your own Zashian still waiting in the back. At least the Landorus has gone for an Airstream, so may may be faster than the Zashian and could go for one final Max Quake. But if you do go for that Max Quake, that is, this is your final opportunity to go for a Rockfall into the Rotom, and the Landorus really is the best way through that Rotom, especially because mm. you've got Venusaur in the back. Venusaur is not going to be threatening down the Rotom too much at all. And Zashian, yeah, coming in here, we'll have to see if the Landorus is going to be able to outspeed that Zashian. If it doesn't, then the Behemoth Blade will still just be able to go first and take it out. Uh, so yeah, the fi final turn of Dynamax for Landorus could just go for the Protects on the Lander on the Zashin and the Rotom as well, stall out that final turn, and then it's just yeah. limited to Earthquakes. That would mean you have to Earthquake your own, your own Venusaur or Rock Slides to try and hit the Rotom, but then that's really not going to threaten down the Zashin as well. And we still got a Pokemon in the back for Guillermo that we haven't seen either. So a yeah, really, st really strong position for Guillermo, really good targeting uh, with that Max Phantasm and Overheat into that Zashin. 
Yeah, indeed. And uh, knowing that the Rotom needs to be preserved, that Gastrodon comes in to replace it, uh, making sure that Rotom is there for the end game. And of course, resetting those stats that have been lowered already. Uh, Zashian going for the Protect, so playing it safe on that last turn of Dynamaxes. Max Quake does go into the Protect, doesn't do too much damage. We've already had an attack drop from the Max Wormwind, of course. Uh, going to be raising the special defense of both Venusaur and Landorus, but that's not going to be doing too many favors for Taran here because that Zashian is the main threat and it's going to be hitting on the physical side. And now that Landorus is now in its normal form rather than in its Dynamax form, uh, Taran's going to have to choose whether he goes for Earthquakes and attacks his own Pokemon or if he pr has to protect one of his slots at any point that he wants to target the Zashian. Yeah, an Earthquake might not even be enough on this Zashian. Uh, the Max Quake being so much stronger uh, would have been pro probably able to take out the knockout on that Landorus, but instead it's going to be the Rock Slide. <laughs> yeah, where there's a Rock Slide, there's a way, and uh, Landorus is going first, getting that critical hit on the Zashian, but not too important there. Uh, Behemoth Blade coming out from the Zashian, so no flinches coming out from that Rock Slide, and Venusaur is going to be the target of choice, not picking up the KO there, so Venusaur is going to be able to attack and get that Sleep Powder off. Taran connects with the Sleep Powder, not the Hypnosis, but the Sleep Powder uh, from earlier, and we do see a Scald coming in from the gastrodon and with a burn oh that is absolutely oh no of course the lumberry no burns onto the landrus that is an absolutely crucial item choice but yeah great turn there for taran just showing you how well he has trained his pokemon yeah, there might be a way back into this for Taran after all, with both of those those survivals, the Landorus and the Venusaur. Hey, you can take the knockout on the Gastron at least with any grass move the Venusaur wants to go for. Uh, still going to be Rock Slide, so you don't want to be Earthquaking yourself yet. Uh, but yeah, you can take out that Zashian uh, in the future with an Earthquake. See if the Venusaur can take out this Gastrodon with a grass move. Yeah, indeed, as a Rock Slide comes out from the Landorus. Uh, Zashian stays asleep, uh, does have to take his guaranteed turn of sleep, and we see a combination of Rock Slide and Earth Power coming out from the Venusaur, doing really big damage to that Zashian, and nearly picking up the KO, but of course Landorus does go down to the Scald, so going to be the last Pokemon for Taran coming in. And you'd like to think it's that Torkoal in the back here. Now we're down to the final Pokemon. Oh. So Venusaur, Venusaur all on its own against the Zashin. The, at least the, it's facing down the Gastrodon, that is a positive for it. Uh, but then <laughs> there is always that Rotom Heat just waiting in the back. Uh, Going to be immune to any of the Sleep Powders the Venusaur would want to go for. And probably in range of even just a Thunderbolt at this point, you wouldn't even need to risk the accuracy. If the Zashin's not able to wake up at all, and even if it does, uh, then you're just still going to get KO to the, the Earth Power from the Gastrodon. And in quite commanding fashion here, Guillermo is going to take the set 2-0. and oh. Indeed, and Guillermo is going to be the third player uh, that makes it to the top four bracket. Uh, congratulations to both players. A uh, really well played there for Guillermo. Uh, looked like he just had that one key uh, Pokemon in the matchup in that Rotom Heat that Taran just really couldn't get himself past. Yeah, such a crucial Pokemon in the match. We saw how dominant it was in that game one, and we saw the adaption was made. There was the Landorus as the lead. Um, we also mm -hmm. saw that Hypnosis miss in the in the first turn of game two. A very high risk, high rewards kind of move. And if, if it did connect with that Dragapult, that is at least one of the turns, maybe both the turns of the Dragapult's Dynamax wasted. And unfortunately, it did not connect uh, with the Dragapult that time. So then it was able to just go for all of those Phantasmas. It was able to take the knockout on the Zashian because it had got that Airstream before. And yeah, even, even though the Rotom didn't Dynamax in that game too, was still able to put on enough pressure, still getting that knockout on the Zashian, uh, even with the minus two drop. And, and re really a strong showing for that Rotom Heat here. Very much so, very much so. I think uh, as a closing thought, sometimes uh, when you commit to a strategy uh, in something like bringing that Landorus to knock out the Rotom, uh, sometimes you just got to commit to it. And I think Taran was a little bit uh, reluctant to do so just in case uh, uh, Guillermo was going to be interacting and maybe doing protect and, and uh, he would have been wasting a turn. But uh, this is how the game plays sometimes and uh, well played to both players for sure. We're going to take a short break now. We're going to be back with the fourth and final uh, match of the top eight players before uh, we go into the ever important top four and on to the finals later. So stay tuned. We'll be right back very soon. <laughs> 